Hello friends, welcome to another video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to look into again uh, uh, time intelligence and the date dimension and the importance of date dimension. I already did like eight videos on uh, learning the basics of uh, date dimension and time intelligence function. This is just in a ninth video in the series. As in when I learn few things, I, I like to share in, in, in on the time intelligence. So this one is again based on a, a question posted in Power BI Community Forum. I did answer the question, but uh, before this, the solution was already uh, given by uh, one of my very close friend, Paragati. She already provided the solution, but the user was looking for a little bit more than what she provided. The solution she provided was awesome and already worked perfectly fine. But uh, when I looked into uh, the, the question and uh, I, I had a, a, another way to solve it and I'm going to share what I learned from, from that video or, basic, or from that particular question. And so there's a time intelligence part in, in this problem, which I want to share with, the, uh, with you in this video. So let's look at the, look at the problem, what user posted. Uh, Basically, what the user is looking for was conditional reformatting for dates. What the user was looking for, uh, there is a slicer and uh, he wants to highlight the selected quarter and the same period last year. So if Q1 22 is selected, he wanted to highlight the Q1 2022 and also the Q1 uh, 2021. So whatever the... Uh, so quarter is selected in the slicer and highlight that one and also the same quarter in the previous year. Um, as I said, the solution was already provided by Parakti using today's date as the as the quarter. And then it will look at what, where, where we are in today. Like today is a 5th of April. It looked at the Q2 2022 and then it also highlighted the Q1, uh, Q2 of 2021. Um, so, but again, as I said, the user was looking for, he wanted to select a quarter in the, in the slicer and then highlight that quarter and the same quarter last year. First of all, to solve this, um, what I already have a model here, a, a calendar table and, uh, and then it, there's a quarter column in the calendar table. So I'm going to use that and, uh, and then I have a sales, um, which is just a sum of sales. And if we highlight this, and uh, this is work, working perfectly fine, but if I use quarter as user is looking for a, a quarter as my slicer, if I, if I slice anything, then, then it, will, it will actually, of course, uh, slice the visual as well. Uh, and the user want to be still see all the quarters and then whatever the quarter user uh, select in here that should get highlighted and the same quarter in the last year so we cannot use the main cal calendar dimension table because it will filter the, our our sales table so what we need to do is we need to create a disconnected table and uh, with the disconnected table then we can use that as in a as in a slicer so i already did that i created a another table called calendar quarter for slicer and then it's just a copy of my calendar table. So this is perfectly fine. So once I create the copy of the calendar table, I just use the quarter from my uh, from the new disconnected table. It does not have any relationship and then use it as in a slicer. So this is uh, right now nothing will happen because if we select anything, it, it's not doing anything because what we need to do is uh, the purpose was to highlight whatever the quarter is selected and also the same quarter last year. But what I'm going to do in this video is to show uh, how to find out uh, what the current quarter is selected and what the previous quarter is selected. So what we can, uh, so, and one of the reasons for doing this video is to showcase how the time intelligence function works and how it is important to mark your date dimension table as a date table. Now, again, you can have the multiple tables in your data model to be marked as a date table uh, because it's not like only the main calendar table has to be marked as a date table you if for some reason you have a multiple calendar table in your model like in this case we have a two calendar table one calendar table which is part of the model connected to the sales table or the fact table the new one which we created just a copy of the calendar table but it is just for the slicer purpose 
So I can also mark this table as a date table as well. But before we go there, let's look into how we can get the current quarter and the, and the last quarter. And, 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 uh, and that, that will also show why it is important to mark as a date table. So let me start writing a measure. So what we're gonna, I'm gonna call this measure is a current and previous selected quarter. So the first thing what we need to do is to, and, and one thing we also want to, anytime I design these kind of things, I also look through is if this is not a single select and what should be the default behavior. If user does not select any quarter, then the current today's date should be used as the, as the, as the current quarter. So now how we can do that. So first thing we could do is let's find out the current quarter. Let's store it in a variable. So what we can do here is we can say selected value from our new current quarter, or not current quarter, a calendar quarter table and get the quarter. If anything is selected, it will give us the quarter. If nothing is selected, of course, then that this it's going to return us the blank so what we can do is instead of we can set the default value what we can set the default value as so we can say calculate max of calendar quarter quarter and give me based on where calendar quarter date is today So let's see what this return. I'm going to return current quarter as the output. And instead of using this visual here, I'm going to switch it to KPI and use this new uh, measure as a current quarter. Current end. So as we can, if we have selected the Q1 2018, let's collapse this. If we have selected Q1 2018, and we are getting the Q1 2018 as our current selected quarter. Whatever the quarter we select, we get that. And if we don't select anything, it is giving Q2 2022. The reason why it's giving to Q2 2022, because that is that today's, if nothing is selected, then it is using today as the, as the default quarter. So getting the current quarter is pretty straightforward. So now, we, as I said, the question was, okay, I want to highlight the current quarter and also the parallel quarter to this if I selected uh, Q2 2018, I also want to highlight Q2 2017. So it means now based on whatever our current quarter, we want to find out what the parallel quarter to this one is. So how we can do that? The one way to do that is we can try to find, uh, use the same period last year A as, a, as our uh, um, a time intelligence function. So let's, uh, let's try to write another uh, value to store previous quarter date. So what we can do here is calculate max of calendar quarter date and what this date is supposed to be same period last year. Now if we go same period last year and if I just go calendar quarter date, so we will check what this returns. So let's now return this previous quarter date. So let's see what the expected output is here. <clears throat> so we are getting 31st December 2021. This is correct uh, in a sense because our calendar quarter is goes up to 2022. So it took the last date of the calendar quarter and gave us the same period last year and then we got the 31st December 2021. This is perfectly fine in a sense, but let's test if we select something here. So if I select Q3 2021, now I'm getting the blank value. Why I'm getting the blank value here? So that's the first thing. Why I'm not getting Q? 3 2020 
And this is where mark as date table for your date dimension becomes very, very important because this, that same period last year is not returning any value. But let me quickly show you guys. If I go calendar quarter, mark as date table, this mark as a date table, and then uh, I select the date because that is my a, a unique column and then say OK. Look what happened. Marking the calendar table, we haven't changed the DAX measure at all. Marking the calendar table or calendar quarter table as a date table immediately gave us the correct result because this is what we expected. But Q3 2021 is a, a uh, September of 2021. And now we are getting the last date for the previous year is 30th of uh, 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 September 2020. Let's see if I pick Q1 2021, I would get, so that is the last date is March of 2021. I'm getting the March of 2020 as my previous quarter for this same period last year. Now, again, this, it's, this is where it becomes very, very important that marking a calendar table does not matter. You can have a multiple calendar table in your model. Then you, if you're using the time intelligence functions on those tables, you want to make sure that you're marking as in a date table. As I said, when it was not marked as a date table, we were not getting the same period last year was no returning anything, but now it returned what we are uh, looking for. So this is perfectly fine. So this is working fine. There's one small challenge in here. Uh, if I don't select anything, I should not be getting 31st December 2021. As I said, by default, if there's nothing is selected, then it should take today as your a, is the current quarter. So if my current quarter is a Q2 2022, I should also get the Q2 2021. So what we need to do is we need to tweak our, this measure a little bit. What we need to do here is we should tell it, okay, calculate table. So create a table, which would be values of calendar quarter date happened here calendar quarter date okay and then i want it to so values will return me a unique value for um, a, a, a from calendar quarter date and then what i want to do is filter this table keeping the filter because we just want to make sure uh, that uh, uh, we are always filtering up to the current date so Let's see today. And so that should do it. So what we are doing is so what we we are forcing our calendar date table, which is up to 31st December 2022 with this inner query, what we're telling it to filter our calendar quarter only up to today. So so that even we have dates in the future, but we don't want to go in the future. So when we will go same period last year, it will give us uh, to the uh, last year 2021. So let's look at the result now, what, what happens here. Here you go. So now we are getting 5th of uh, um, uh, April 2021 because now today's it is locked up to the today. So if I select any, uh, if I select Q3 2020 and I'm getting that 2019 the same, and if I, whatever I select, if I don't select anything, then it used today's as the default date. So this is working fine. So now we got the date of the last year. Now from here, it is very easy to get the quarter. So what we can do is, uh, first we, we got the date here. Now what we can do is we can say, okay, what is my previous quarter is going to be? So that is pretty straightforward. We can say calculate max of calendar quarter. quarter that's the column what we want it's, it it is what q2 2019 q2 uh, 2018 that's the value in the quarter column and then we say okay i want my calendar quarter date to be filtered on what i already know what is the previous year the quarter date is so now if we return this one what let's see what happens here 
So why we're getting Q2, I haven't selected anything here. The reason why we're getting Q2 2021, because based on today's date, we are in a Q2 2022, and the previous one is Q2 2021. If I select anything here, I select Q2 2020. My previous one is Q2 2019. So if I put this whole thing together, just concatenate these current quarter and the previous quarter, just to see the result. All right, here you go. So now we see the current and previous selected quarter parallelly. So if, if I don't select anything, this is Q2 2022 versus Q2 2021. If I, if I select something Q4 2021 with the Q4 2021. Now from here onward, the solution is pretty straightforward what user was looking because he wanted to highlight. Now what we can do use a conditional formatting. We can say, okay, if our current quarter uh, from the date dimension table, because that's what we're doing for the visualization. If the a quarter from our date dimension table, which is actually we use for the visualization is equal to current quarter or equal to the previous quarter, then the color is red or blue or whatever you want. Otherwise the default color, and then use that on the conditional formatting on your bar chart and whatever the, uh, uh, the quarter you will select those will that will be highlighted and the same quarter in the last year will be highlighted and if nothing is selected that today will be used as the current quarter and the uh, same period in last year will be used based on the today's date uh, as the previous quarter and those will get highlighted and then everything will work again the purpose of this video was to showcase like how the disconnected table works and if you have a more than one date dimension table in your model and you want to apply a time intelligence function on that, you can mark that also as a date table. You can have more than, um, you can have a more tables, date dimension tables in your model, and they all can be marked as a date table. It does not have to be the only the one which you are, is a part of your model. There can be many date dimension table uh, uh, for whatever the reason it is. Again, I hope you learned a couple of things out of this video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Until next video, have a good day. Do subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye for now.